Hi, my name is Diane Vance. I'm in the chemistry department at Eastern Kentucky University. And today I'm going to be demonstrating for you the experiment on solubility and rate of solution. First, I want to uh, remind you of a few definitions that you've learned in class. A solution is a homogeneous mixture, which means that it is composed of two or more substances that are physically mixed and in one phase. The solubility of a solution refers to the amount of solute, which is the material that goes into solution, that can be dissolved in a given amount of solvent, which is the material that does the dissolving. In most solutions, the solute is the solid and the solvent is a liquid. A third definition refers to the rate of solution. Rate has the same meaning that it does in everyday life, and that means how fast does the material go into solution. And finally, I wanted to find the term saturated solution. All of you know that only a certain amount of solute can go into a given amount of solvent. And after you exceed that amount, the rest of the solute simply will settle to the bottom of the container. At this point, the solution contains all the solute that it can, and we refer to this as a saturated solution. The experiment today has two parts. In the first part, you will measure the solubility of sodium chloride in water. In the second part, you will look at three factors that can affect the rate of solution. And those three factors are temperature, agitation, and size of particles. The equipment that you'll be using today is all familiar to you. You will be using a balance. You've used those before. A ring stand, a ring, a wire gauze, Bunsen burner, you will be using filter paper, 9 centimeter. You will need a beaker, 150 milliliters. You will be using a funnel, tongs, and an evaporating dish, a watch glass, a small stirring rod, test tubes, a test tube rack, and stoppers that are an appropriate size to fit inside the test tubes. In the first part of the experiment, we're going to measure the solubility of sodium chloride in water. To do this, we're first of all going to get some sodium chloride, which is table salt, and we're going to put it into a test tube. Now, the scoop that we'll be using it would be a little bit hard to put the sodium chloride directly into the test tube with this scoop. So what we'll do instead is simply get a piece of uh, filter paper, and we'll fold the filter paper a little bit. We'll put the sodium chloride on the filter paper, and then we can simply add the sodium chloride to the test tube. Once the sodium chloride has been added to the test tube, We'll use the distilled water in the squirt bottle, and we'll fill this tube about half full of distilled water. The next thing we want to do is put a stopper in this tube, and we want to shake this very well. Your procedure says to shake this for approximately a minute. I won't shake it quite that long. But what you want to do is shake it, and when you finish shaking it, you want to be sure that there is still some salt that settles down to the bottom. If this happens, then we know that we have what is called a saturated solution. Now, one scoop of salt should be plenty to make a saturated solution with this amount of water. But if by chance, when you shake this up, you see that there is no salt settled into the bottom, then you need to add more salt to make a saturated solution. The next thing that you need to do is get the evaporating dish assembly, which consists of the evaporating dish, the watch glass, and the stirring rod. And you need to weigh this entire assembly. So as usual, you go to the balance. You'll push the zero on the balance. After it's zeroed, add the evaporating dish assembly to the uh, balance pan and record the balance, making sure that you record it to three decimal places. Now that you have finished weighing the evaporating dish assembly, you need to prepare the filter to filter the salt water solution. 
take a piece of filter paper and fold it in half to make a semicircle, and then fold it in half one more time so that it's in quarters. You can then open the piece of filter paper with three thicknesses on one side and one thickness on another so that it forms a cone, and then simply put that cone down into the funnel. Now at first it might pop out a little bit, but as you put water into it, that will cause the filter paper to adhere to the funnel a little bit better. The funnel then is placed into a test tube rack. Under the funnel, you want to put the evaporating dish that you're going to use to catch the salt water solution that's filtered. After you've put the evaporating dish under here, you can take the salt water, the saturated salt solution that you've made, and simply pour it through the funnel, making sure that you have three thicknesses of paper on one side and one thickness on the other, otherwise all the salt will also go through the funnel. After most of the liquid has filtered through the funnel, you can remove the funnel and then take the evaporating dish, again put the stirring rod in and the watch glass on top, which is the way you had it when you weighed it the first time, and then you want to re-weigh. You would, of course, as usual, zero the balance, determine the mass, and then record the mass on your report sheet. Once you've determined the mass of the evaporating dish assembly, you then are going to need to heat this to drive away the water so that we can find out how much salt was dissolved in the solution. The next thing that you need to do is to prepare a water bath to heat the evaporating dish so that we can drive off the water. Fill a beaker 150 mil size, approximately half filled with tap water. You then can put the beaker on the wire gauze and light the Bunsen burner and begin to heat the water. You want to adjust the flame to about three or four inches and remember also that we want a nice warm flame so we want to make it non-luminous. That means we have to twist the barrel to admit air. The next thing that you need to do is to put the evaporating dish on the beaker that's making the hot water bath. Before you do that, you need to remove the watch glass from the evaporating dish, and you can leave the watch glass off for the first part of heating so that evaporation takes place a little bit more quickly. Occasionally, you also want to stir to break up any crust that might form. As heating progresses, you may find that the solution begins to splatter, and at that point, you will need to put the watch glass back on the evaporating dish for the end of heating. While you're heating the evaporating dish for part A, you can go on and work on part B. In part B of the experiment, you'll look at the effect of three factors on solubility. The effect of particle size, the effect of temperature, and the effect of stirring or agitation on the rate of solution. The first part of part B is a look at the effect of particle size on the rate of solubility. What you'll need for this experiment, part of the experiment, are two test tubes and some copper sulfate, both in powdered form and in a crystal form. Bottles of copper sulfate in powder and crystal form will be available in the laboratory. You can simply get a scoop of the copper sulfate of the powdered form and pick out a crystal of copper sulfate for the other tube. What you then want to do is add the copper sulfate to the tubes and transfer it to a test tube. You then want to pick one crystal of copper sulfate and transfer that to a second test tube. You'll then use the distilled water bottle to fill each tube approximately half filled with distilled water.
you'll then let these tubes stand for a few minutes. After a few minutes, you then want to decide which of the two types of material dissolved faster, the powdered one or the solid crystal. You will, of course, need a way to decide that, and since copper sulfate is a colored solution, one of the ways that you'd be able to tell that is by the depth of the color. So after a few minutes, you can look at the two solutions, the powdered and the crystal, and see which one has the deeper color. This will indicate which one dissolved faster. In the second part of part B, you want to look at the effect of stirring or agitation on the rate of solution. For this part, you'll need two crystals of copper sulfate. And you want to pick two crystals that are about the same size. For example, you might want to pick this crystal and this crystal rather than one very large one and one very small one. You would add the crystals to two separate tubes. Again, use the distilled water bottle to fill each tube about half filled with water. One of the tubes you're going to allow to simply stand in the test tube rack with no shaking or agitation. The other tube, you're going to take a rubber stopper, put the stopper in the tube, and shake this tube for about a minute. Now, I won't take an entire minute to shake the tube, but after you have shaken this one for at least a minute, put the two tubes side by side, and again, use the depth of the blue color in the solution to decide which of the two dissolved faster, the one with or without agitation. In the third part of this, you'll look at the effect of temperature on the rate of solubility. Now, before you can do this part, you actually will need to complete part A because you'll need the hot water from part A to do this part of the experiment. So you want now to return to part A of the experiment, check the evaporating dish. Before you complete the third part of section B of the experiment, you need to return to the evaporating dish from part A because you're going to need some of the hot water from the hot water bath. You want to check and see if all the water yet has evaporated from the salt solution, and in this case it has. And if you find that that's the case, then you want to remove the evaporating dish from the beaker. Now, I'm first of all going to take the entire beaker off and put it onto a hot pad. And then we actually need to heat the evaporating dish just a little bit more with the cover on this time in order to ensure that all the water has been removed. So I'm going to put the evaporating dish back on to the wire gauze. And I'm going to cover that with a watch glass. And I'm going to gently heat that until all the condensation that appears on the watch glass at first has gone away. While that's heating, I can use the hot water to finish part B of the experiment. The third factor that we were going to look at that could affect the rate of solution is temperature. To take a look at this factor, we are again going to use the powdered form of the copper sulfate. And we'll add powdered copper sulfate to each of two tubes. To one of these tubes, we're going to add cool water. And to the other, we're going to add some hot water from the hot water bath that we used for part A. I'll fill both approximately half full. This one is the cool water. The beaker with the hot water will still be hot. So you want to use tongs and make sure that you don't spill any of the hot water on yourself. and fill that tube approximately half full also. You allow the tubes to stand for about a minute. And after a minute, you again look at the tubes and compare the depth of color of the solution to decide which one has dissolved faster. 
temperature is a factor that also affects not only the rate of solution, but also the amount of material that can go into solution or the solubility of the substance. So after you've allowed the tubes to stand for one minute and you've decided which of the two solutions has dissolved faster, you then want to get stoppers, put stoppers in both tubes, and shake both tubes for approximately a minute or 30 seconds. After all the dissolution has taken place, and I haven't shaken these quite for a minute, you then want to compare the two and see which one has more copper sulfate dissolved in it. After you finish those, that set of tubes, part B is complete, and you can return to the work in part A. Part A, we've had the evaporating dish on the wire gauze for a few minutes. The top of the watch glass looks dry. There's no more condensation on it. So we can turn off the Bunsen burner, and we can allow the watch, gla the watch glass and the evaporating dish to cool. It can just stay on top of the wire gauze, or you can remove it to the hot pad. After the evaporating dish is completely cooled, you then can weigh the evaporating dish with the watch glass and the stirring rod. As usual, remember to zero the balance first. Place the entire assembly on the balance, and remember to record the mass of the material to three decimal places. After you have this data recorded on your report sheet, you then can do the calculations to calculate the solubility of the salt in the water. To do this, you simply need to know the weight of the salt, which you would find by subtracting the mass of the evaporating dish assembly from this mass, which is the assembly with the salt in it. You also need to know the weight of the salt water, which you would obtain by subtracting the weight of the assembly from the weight of the assembly plus the salt water. To calculate the solubility of the salt in water, you simply take the weight of the salt divided by the weight of the salt water times 100. To clean up for this experiment, you can put the salt water down the sink. There will be a special container for the copper sulfate in the hood, so be sure to dispose of any excess copper sulfate or copper sulfate solution in the special containers provided.